frenemies. We are a couple that play a lot of games, usually with just the two of us. Today we're looking at Viticulture, the first game by popular designer Jamie Stegmeier and his company Stonemeyer Games. Viticulture is a worker placement game set in the vineyards of Italy. It's a medium weight game that works well for folks new to the hobby, not just for its easy to understand game flow, but for its accessible theme and general prettiness. Players each take control of a modest vineyard, moving through a series of years as they assign their workers to grow grapes, harvest those grapes, turn those grapes into wine, and fill all of your wine orders, while also guiding tours and interacting with visitors along the way. The game is a bit of a modern classic and recently released an essential edition that tweaks the original product, as well as an essential version of its Tuscany expansion, which many see as a necessary part of the package. But we will go into that later. First, let's decant what's inside the box. Stonemeyer Games has become known for its quality, and that started with Viticulture. The main board is lovely, as are the vineyard player mats. Everything's got a rustic Italian feel, all old country and relaxing. The wooden meeples are great, and the art on the cards is all top quality. There are a lot of extra touches, like the mama and papa deck that has a weird amount of care put into it for something that you only use right at the start of the game. The only slight qualm is that a few of the buildings look a bit too similar, but because the buildings are placed on specific slots on the player board, even if you happen to put a cottage on the spot for the large cellar, it's not really going to make a difference. Maybe the smartest touch of the whole thing is the grapes, which are simple glass beads. At first, this doesn't look like much, but once you realize that the transparency lets you see the value underneath, you really appreciate the cleverness of this touch. The whole package has that little extra bit of sophistication that welcomes new players and looks great on the table, and it certainly helps that it all pairs so well with a drink. There's an underlying ease to the game as players really just follow the winemaking process. You do this by starting with two normal size and one grande worker, who gets assigned to various spaces that each do something specific. The grande has the extra bonus of being able to use a space that has already been used by another player. You can recruit more workers as you go, build helpful structures in your vineyard, make money by giving tours, and collect cards that can provide some much needed help, all while going through the main steps of growing, making, and selling wine. All of this takes place over two seasons, and it works well. There is a quick, easy flow to the game, which ends after one player gains 20 points, mostly from filled wine orders, plus a few fancy pants connoisseurs and the odd tourists who might stop by your cellar for a quick tasting. The game tends to ramp up quickly, and often ends a bit sooner than you expect, which leaves you wanting just a little bit more in a good way. When you're talking about viticulture, the big question is always, how soon do I get the expansion? Which makes sense because Tuscany is a famously solid expansion. It adds new personal structures as well as workers with variable special powers and a few other neat little bits. And most importantly, a whole new board that makes a lot of substantial changes to the game. Now, instead of what was basically two seasons, you have four separate sections with a bunch of new spaces that provide alternate paths to get that sweet, sweet wine into your customers' mouths. Most agree that it is an upgrade, but do you need it? Well, it depends on who you are. If you're a fairly hardcore board gamer and you've got a dozen or so worker placement games already and you just want to get straight to that maximized version, then probably. But if you're newish to the hobby and just dipping your toe into worker placement and some of these mechanics, then not only would I say not yet, I would say that the base game is going to likely be a much better fit. It has a nice level of complexity, but it's not a full brain burner. There's a more leisurely pace for a more forgiving stroll through the vineyard. The vast majority of people are going to get a lot of plays out of the box before they really start to see those patterns and feel the need to upgrade. But it's nice that Tuscany's there once you're ready for something with a bit more body. Viticulture works well with two. Scaling is dealt with simply by cutting out the extra available spaces for each drop, leaving just one open. This can make certain spaces very important, but most actions have alternative routes. Someone takes the harvest, use your own personal yoke. 
which is apparently a harvest thing. Someone fills their orders first, use a card to sell to your own private buyers. Your opponent hires their worker first, well then your grande worker can step in and do some hiring of your own. There are of course times when you get there too slow and there's nothing you can do and you lose some ground. But if you wanted life to be easy, you'd be making some grape juice. Plus, you can always make up for it the following year. The two-player game is enhanced a bit by the expansion, with the extra spots and bonuses, but the original works almost as well. And if you have guests over, it expands to six with no problems. Worker placement can be a great intro into the world of Euro board games, and Viticulture has a built-in logic that's easy to grasp. It makes sense. Plant, harvest, bottle, age, and sell, and while it is accessible, many seasoned gamers still list this as one of their top worker placements, if not their very top. That said, there is an inherent randomness to the cards, and it can be tough when you've aged your wine to perfection and your opponent grabs that very important sell space before you can, throwing your plans out the window and making your customers wait a whole other year. But if you're someone who can live with a setback or two and connects to the theme, there's no other game that goes as well with a nice board of soft cheeses. And that is it. It. If you have already played Viticulture, let us know what you think about it. We'd also love to hear about your other favorite worker placement games that people should check out. And thanks for sticking around, and hopefully you'll all be back again next time for another game.